I crave your indulgence and ask you to just stand. And may I crave it further and ask you to just stretch. I know, we have had lunch. So, I won't go any further. You miss it. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to just um, thank the Productivity Centre for inviting me to be here this afternoon. Um, and the Ministry of Labour, you know, we have an MOU with you, with the Ministry of Labour. And so I'm, I feel almost like a part of this family. And my presentation this, this afternoon is really dedicated to, and it's really a byproduct of the over 400 staff members of PICA. I think we are doing great. Those 400 represent less than 70% of the number of staff positions that are on our um, organizational charts. So to have achieved this, I think, is quite something with less than 70% of the staff that is allotted to us. So, well, while they are loading, I can share with you, I can start, I know so much about my company. Oh, okay, here we are. All right, background. In June, I need to come forward. In June 2007, Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, became the 10th public sector public entity to obtain executive agency status. And the aim is really to provide excellent and good quality, efficient service to the public. I know we are supposed to be making, um, to be self-sufficient, but when you think about all the executive agencies in Jamaica, not many, that is not the primary goal. The primary goal is really to offer an improved quality of service to the public. Now, we were created from a former division within the Ministry of National Security. Many other EAs are created from a standalone department. If you think of the other EAs, RGD, NLA, Works Department, um, we, we were a bit unusual in that we were a part, just a division in a ministry. Our transformation was guided by a modernization plan, which was initiated in 2005, and the purview of the agency is really border security. Now, learning to measure and measuring to learn, determining where you want to go by looking at where you currently are, and deciding how to, your, to get to your goals while carefully evaluating each step. As an EA, we are expected to provide a high level, high quality of service to our customers in the areas of passports, immigration, and citizenship. Our goal is to become a world-class entity, and so planning is important to us. And I'll just share some statistics with you. We process between 150 and 200,000 passports per annum. And we, in immigration, we process more passengers coming in and going out of the country than the entire population of Jamaica. Last year in 2012, we processed 4.7 million passengers. That is both at arrival and departure. And citizenship, Any, anybody who wishes to become a citizen of Jamaica, be it by descent and based on our laws, there is no limit to the, the generations. Once you can prove that you are a descendant of a Jamaican, then you are eligible. We also grant citizenship based on marriage and based on um, the time of, of that you have been living in the country. Now, it is always good to evaluate your efforts. Oh, modernize, the modernization plan gave way to the agency's corporate plan. And I brought a copy of our corporate plan here. Uh, anyone is interested, we do a three-year three corporate plan. And we are just coming from our management retreat uh, last weekend, where we looked at planning for the next three-year cycle, and we established strategic objectives. 
Now, it is always good to evaluate your efforts so you know how you are doing and to determine whether you are on the right track. Without this evaluation process, you may not be able to be informed, to make informed decisions, and so you'll be shooting from the dark. And some of my staff are here, and they know that I do not like to go net fishing, and so they know, know that I do not like to do things in the dark. So we have developed a system of measurements. We recognize that a system of measurement is an effective tool for evaluating one's performance. Based on the strategic objectives, instruments known as performance indicators and key performance indicators were developed. And these indicators are based on specific predetermined areas of performance that were targets. It really ought to have been areas of performance. And these indicators are further rolled down into our corporate plan, our operational plan, unit plan, and individual work plan. Now, this took us some time to do because we are coming, remember, we are coming from a division within a, within a ministry. And the only time reports were done was when the minister was speaking in parliament, at, um, which happens once per year, to report on his portfolio. And we were moving, we were making like a seismic change within the organization to be measuring first of all and reporting and then measuring and setting targets and so on. It was like a catastrophic, a cataclysmic change within the organization. And those persons who were in the organization before, some have endured, some we have parted company, but I think those that have remained can say that we are much better for it. In determining which on indicators that would be key performance indicators, consideration was given to those that would enhance the service delivery to our clients. So things like volume indicators, we didn't call those key performance indicators. We have no control over the number of passengers that come. We have no control over the number of passport applications we get. So that is really not a measure of our performance. So some examples of our key performance indicators would be turnaround times for the delivery of our services. For example, we say we want to do local citizenship by descent. We want to do that in 30 days, and all these days are working days. Airport passengers process within two minutes of approaching the immigration counter because we had to develop a metric that was fair to the customer and fair to our staff. So we say once you're at the immigration desk, we believe that we can conduct an interview with you in two minutes without compromising the nation's security. We also have a seven-day delivery time for passports, and we introduced a three-day a next day expedited service since the agency was formed. We also felt that we needed some quality standard, and so we said error free documents produced for the public was another metric, another indicator. Setting ourselves targets now for achieving performance indicator adds value to those indicators. Whoops. And these are some examples of our KPIs. We say we want to process 98% of compliant applications for passport in seven days, seven working days. 98% of compliant applications, and we have met that last year. 90%, um, this is now citizenship, of applications for Jamaican citizenship by descent in 30 days, we did 97%. And at our retreat, all of these indicators, we are looking at them to see how we can improve within the constraints of the, of that we have now in terms of freeze on government employment and all of that. Um, we said 85% of passengers to be processed at airports within two minutes of approaching the immigration desk. And we did 89.5 last year. We said we want to host 12 
passport mobiles in the year. And we were able to do that. 12, another one is coming up um, next month. We'll, we'll speak about that later. Another indicator, for example, hold six meetings with non-governmental stakeholders, like I'm doing with you here this evening. Um, 10 were actually done. Produce 99.9% .9 of passports error-free. Now this one, let us pause, because when this was presented to me at first, I told my staff that this was a cook's constant. You know, you know that term? You just de develop a, when you are working out your formulas, and you just put something in, in it for, for it to balance. That's what I thought that was. But we are actually able to count. So it is not, um, it is not just a made-up figure. And so 60% of telephone calls at HQ without, within 35 seconds. When we, when we had this in our corporate plan, we were not able to measure it because we inherited a, 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 a telephone system that was just not possible to, to give any kind of measurement. And since we have introduced VoIP, I think about, about two years now, and at least we are able to measure no, we want to improve that. But the thing is that we are now in a position to improve because we now know what we are doing. Prior to VoIP, we had no idea of how we were doing, except we knew that we all waited um, for a long time to, to, to be answered on the telephone. Now, KPIs are useful for monitoring the agency's progress throughout the year and for determining success in reaching our desired goals. They are useful in determining individual performance, which indicators are useful and which aren't, what works, what doesn't work, what just adjustments are need to, um, to, are, uh, we should make to our operations. Remember in the last slide, I pointed out that for immigration, we did processing in two minutes. Well, that was not always two minutes. It was when we just started, we had a metric of three minutes. And then we realized that we could work, we, could, we were doing better than the three minutes, and so we decided to have a two-minute um, turnaround time for passengers at the airport. Now, how do we measure? We produce monthly, we have monthly reports, quarterly reports, which are required by, by law. We do surveys, customer service surveys. We do our own external surveys. We contracted a a consultant to do that for us last year. Prior to that, we could only afford to do internal surveys by a customer service uh, manager. We do, it is the airports at which we operate, they do their own independent surveys, and you'll hear more about that later. And audits, we, our performance indicators are audited by our internal auditor, and even by the, um, we do performance audits, the, the, um, Auditor General does those as well. Now, staff, critical success factor. We see these as staff and our customers. So let's talk about our staff. We need to impart, we needed to impart the vision to get the buying of the staff in establishing a performance management culture. This was seen as critical. And remember, we are coming from a situation where we were just a division in a ministry that did a report once a year when the minister reported to parliament. So can you imagine the, 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 the cataclysmic um, effect that this might have had in terms of creating work plans, individual work plans? Wow, it took quite some bang in. Build staff morale. So while we are because we, are, we, have been have, we have had to have discussions with staff. And many times you thought you might have been, you, re, you, you have reached um, a breakthrough, and the staff said, no, I'm not signing it because my supervisor is forcing me. You had to back off. Um, so while we are doing that, we are doing other things, building staff morale. We do a number of things. I have a very young staff. We have karaoke nights, sporting events. We have houses. Like, I, I was in the yellow house, but I've had to, I was told that as CEO, I cannot be in a house. So I cannot be in a house anymore. We're having our next sports day next, next month. Um, we have pick a challenge, like schools challenge. Our Western staff in the West, they had their Western spring games this year. We have after work parties, domino competition, 
football matches. And these are not the best of quality pictures. We can't afford um, your professional photographer like you people here. We have to use our own little thing, but we are, we are getting there, but that doesn't stop us. You see the yellow house there, that was the, um, that was the um, when we were, oh, when we were walking around. Where we did it again? Um, where, what, what, where Courtney Walsh is, Melbourne. I think it's Melbourne we had it, yes. And that we were walking around and they had, um, cheerleading competition and it was quite a thing because the cheerleaders had to be were covered in garbage bags because they were not to be seen before right one had doves being let out so it was it was it was quite a thing and they had to practice one practice on the roof because they were not to be seen by the other one so it was quite something um, so it is important to test the mood of the staff we are planning to do our employee satisfaction survey. We wanted to do it internally, but we felt, no, we need to get an external person to do it. And we are in the process of, of having, we are having discussions about that now. But, you know, we have delegated authority from the Governor General for HR practices. And so the Office of the Services Commissions, they will conduct HR audits on us. And in that audit, they also have focus group sessions with the staff. And we have brought in consultants, like we are currently reviewing our mission and vision statement, and we have brought in consultants, and we are not, they're not, those consultants are not just speaking with the management team, but they interviewed, they had focus groups with about 50% of the staff. So we do get feedback. Uh, Measuring staff performance in relation to their individual work plans is important. And gaps in employee competencies, those gaps are identified to determine um, future training needs. And we find that to be very, very important. We also have a succession plan, a live and living document. When I showed it to one of the directors at uh, cabinet office, he said it was the first that he was seeing a document to touch and to hold and to feel. And so we are quite pleased with that. And we rolled it out earlier in March this year. And we are having, um, I'm coach for about three people and I have forms to be completed. And it's quite, quite organized. And um, we have tr been training some of our coaches in, in, in coaching. And we also have mentoring for the new immigration officers. We assign them to, their, to a mentor. So that has been, those things have been working. We can improve some more, but these are just some of the things that we're doing. Now with regard to the customers, determining the level of customer satisfaction of our internal customers is critical in analyzing and assessing our performance. We, and as I said earlier, we did internal and external um, surveys um, were administered. And our, I thought I, I was looking to, sh I was going to share with you the results of our survey, because, but it's on my, it's, I have it electronically. It showed that we have an, a, a, a satisfa customer satisfaction index of 75%, which is not bad. We know what drew it down because they interviewed persons in all three operational areas of immigration, passport, and citizenship. We know the areas that are down and we know what to do. We are planning to improve on that. But at least we are, we are able to do an external survey. From the surveys, we aim to address the concerns as best as possible. One of these concerns, one of the concerns of course was customers' frustration at having their photos rejected because they were not of the standard for the passport. And so we have been doing, we have been training photographers um, about the requirements of the passport. And I know that this is a sore point because many persons complain that they have their US passport and their Canadian passports and the pictures when they are not as rigorous. I just want to point out that um, the pic photograph in our passport is the only biometric. In many of these other IDs, there are fingerprints and other biometric. And so we have to be very, very careful to, to meet the IKO standards because that is the only, the only biometric in our passport at this time. 
Another prompt response was the telephone calls. Remember, I spoke about that earlier, and now we are able, for the last quarter, we are able to do 64%. At our management retreat, we thought we were doing well, and we were told, no, 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 that needs to be about 80. So that is what is going to be, where we're going to be pushing for, with resources, of course. Uh, also, strategic alliances. The service that we offer to the public could not be done without us forming strategic alliances, MOUs with various persons. So we have an MOU with the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the police, that they do most of our investigations and we are gradually taking that over. With the Ministry of Labor and Social Security persons who apply for work permits, we sit on the work permit committee and we have an MOU with the ministry so that um, persons are not given work permits whose immigration um, status is not in order. We also have an MF, uh, uh, MOU with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We, uh, when we started, we were able to place desk officers in the missions um, to provide what they call consular services, passport services. We had to withdraw that because it was a bit, um, it was a bit costly, and so we withdrew those, but we came to some other arrangement. With our tourist interests, we work with them a lot. They have a place, a thing called the Tourism Enhancement Fund, which um, is able to assist us greatly. The Jamaica Civil Service Association, we do their, for, as I said before, the mobile in the park. Post and telecom, you're wondering why those are there. Um, we are able to, um, in the post offices, we have offices at two post offices in which we came to an arrangement to, to use their offices. In one instance, they couldn't afford to repair the, the roof. We repaired the roof and offset that against future rent. With RGD, we share space in their Mandeva office. With tax administration, we are in the Portmore office and the Mandeva office in those off days, because I don't know if many of you know, if you go to those tax offices, they are only full at midweek and at the end of the month, mid-month and end of the month. Otherwise, they are like a, a, mos, mos, um, a, like a mausoleum. And so they are very empty. And so the idea is that we would off, offer services in those low, low days. And with VIP attractions, Club Kingston and Club Mobe, when you're traveling, to, off, to, 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 to offer some variation in the product of immigration and at the airports. And, uh, oops. This is just our staff in the Portmore office which is also opened on Saturday. And we also work closely with our stakeholders, um, like the lay magistrates, so, um, lay magistrates, the JPs, because they, are, they can be considered as, a, as an extension of the service we provide with regard to passport applications. With immigrant communities in the country, we have met with those that you see there, Nigerians, Burmese, and so on, because many times they have persons who are giving them false information about immigration. We also meet with the diaspora committee, um, community overseas. We'll be invited and we're sending a team to, to um, London, to the UK next month or the month after. Critical success factors. Creativity in the face of certain mitigating challenges is also critical for our success. Our marketing team employed creativity during the onset of the global economic crisis, despite there being no marketing post within the agency. Uh, this is one of our passport mobiles in Emancipation Park last year. Now this re-engineering of outgoing immigration, we are very pleased about this project. Adjustments were made to our technology and it has led to the improvement in the processing of outgoing. And so for most airlines, passengers bypass the immigration booths and go directly to the security post. What you see there was the first day on the 28th of December, 2012 at Sangster International Airport. We had seven compliant um, airlines and those passengers just went past the line. And I don't know if many of you travel, you will notice it. It is probably just one or two airlines that um, are not compliant as we speak. This could not have been done if we did not have a strategic partnership with the Tourism Enhancement Fund who provided the funds for this. It could not have been done without the talent of our IT staff.
Thank you. Now, the goal of the agency is to achieve 80% of our KPIs, um, and our work is paying off. In 2011, we were, we were awarded the Cabinet Secretary's um, Award for Most Improved Public Sector Entity. In the last quarter of 2012, immigration at Sangster International Airport was rated number one in the region for waiting time by airports, and third in courtesy and helpfulness for passport inspection. And this region includes Mexico. Um, thus, this year, we tied with um, TAJ for most improved, as a runner-up of most improved in the, the public sector um, customer service competition. High achievement always takes place in a framework of high expectations, Jack Kinder. We will continue to have ongoing analyses for un continued improvement. Last year, we celebrated five years of executive agency status, and the next five, we see greater horizons. We I would like to thank all our staff, our customers, and other stakeholders have, who have pushed us. Keep on pushing us, because we have the confidence that we can do whatever we can think about. Thank you.